Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy So So, in case you ain't known so, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for joining us yet again. Make sure you guys are hitting that like, comment, and subscribe button as usual. This week, we're breaking down the Panthers' last couple of games in the Stanley Cup Finals. We're also covering an incredible finish at the U.S. Open, and we're previewing BKFC 62 going down this Friday. And your boy So is going to be in the building. It's time to take a ride, y'all. Let's go! Buddy, I don't know about you, but it's been a long day for me, and I've been working, working, dog. What's going uh, on, Joel? It's good to see you, man. It's been a long day here, too, bro. Long day for work. So long, I had to go get a little afternoon line in, hence the, the golf clothes. Uh, swaggy. To Shout out to HQ Golf. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but yeah, dog, you know, it's been a long week, and it's only Wednesday. So, right. how are you living? I'm doing all right, man. We got a lot of a lot of stuff to cover, man. And I was actually out there at the BKFC 62 press conference today. Had a lot of fun. Um, it was very entertaining. If you guys haven't seen those videos, head on over to a Sports with Soso YouTube channel. Go on the BKFC, and you're gonna find that latest video, man. Um, That's pretty dope. I saw you. You're on the clip. You're you know you got a nice nice question in there for Yomi. Who we got yeah, a nice I, interview with. If you if you get, if you haven't checked it out, make sure to go check that out already. But I saw you got to ask him a question. Yeah, yeah, I got another one there with Justin. You know, those are obviously friends of the program, people that that we like here, and um, we want to see do well because they always put on a show out there at BKFC, man. But uh, yeah, we'll break down that whole event a little bit later. Um, if you, like Joel said, if you haven't caught those interviews and and don't really know who's fighting on Friday night, go watch those interviews. Get yourself acquainted because these guys are stars, man, future stars for sure. Uh, Joel, bro, I'll. I, I almost punched my TV yesterday, dog. Mm, you and a lot of uh, South Floridians. There's there there hasn't been too many teams, right, that really get me to that point because in order for you to break a TV or do something like that, you have to feel like there's an expectation of winning, right? Like we're definitely gonna win this game. We definitely gonna make this comeback. We're definitely gonna make this happen. Yesterday was rough. And before we get to the yesterday's game, right, the last time we recorded, Panthers went up 2-0. They went up to Edmonton, won game three in impressive, impressive, form, impressive form, right, really battling it out with, with Edmonton. And then game four happened. And that shit was a complete disaster. We're not going to get too much into it, but the Panthers were down 3-0 to start the first, the first period. Then it turned into 5-1 very quickly, which it then later turned into 8-1. And yeah, that game that was like... Go ahead. At that point, we pulled Big Bob in, in that game on Saturday night when we went down 5-1, which we haven't pulled Big Bob. <laughs> and I, I can't remember the last time they did it. It got ugly. It got out of the hand. But even with that game, so it was like, okay, you know what? They're going to go the Celtics route. They're going to go ahead and give them one, and they're going to come home and win it here at home in front of the fans. At least we thought. I'm, I mean, when we previewed this Stanley Cup final, Joel, the first one of the things that we talked about was with Edmonton was like they're a high scoring offense. So this game was bound to happen where they put up five, six, seven goals, right? Because they have a bunch of guys who can put the puck in the back of the net. So yeah, I had that same feeling after game four. Like, all right, it's over, right? They got their lick in. No problem. Let's come home and take care of a business in game five, right? Game five comes down on Tuesday, and the same thing happens. Where the Panthers get outplayed, out muscled, out hustled in the first period, and we find ourselves down three zip real quick, early, <laughs> too early, right? Because you 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 figure like, man, you know these guys are gonna come out with that energy, right? They're gonna come out and say, you know what, we have to establish the way that we're gonna play today and how this hockey game is gonna go about. With with the amount of laziness that they showed in that first period, it was honestly surprising that it wasn't five zip. Right. And it could have been because yeah. they, they held us to like, what, four or five shots on goal for that first period. And meanwhile, they were up in the 13, 14. Yeah, it was not a pretty sight and not how you want to start game five at home. You know what I noticed, dog, with this, too, is um, Maurice's lineups that he had going out early. Mm. You know what I mean? Like we kind of mm. switched it up. And, um, you know, I don't know if that had something to do with it. You know, I, they, they said that they liked the rotations and the lineups that they were choosing based off of what. Uh, Edmonton was doing. I obviously don't know enough about that to, to know exactly, you know, how that might affect us. But if it's not the same guys that are usually starting, you know what I mean? You take starters, quote unquote, that are usually out there to start the game. And then you got the guys on the bench ready to jump in for their flow. If you 
take that and you switch it up in the middle of a you know a series, let alone a final series. Like, you, don't you think that that you know might have a, a negative impact on your you know team? Absolutely, and especially on the power plays and power kills, right? Because it's not like we've been very good on the power play in this series. We've been very mediocre, right? And and although we've had chances, especially in this game, right? None of them really turned into dangerous possessions, which sucks because that's when you have to take advantage, right? And and that's something that we harped on before the finals. It, before the final, it was like, bro, we need the Panthers to take advantage of everything that they can get, especially in front of net, because it's going to be hard to keep up scoring with a team as offensively talented as Edmonton is, right? So I was like, fuck, bro, like, let's, let's get it together. And I have to correct myself because they were down one zip at the end of the period. But when that second period started, Edmonton came out and scored three straight goals, and we really didn't have an answer until Keith Kachuk finally, uh, Matthew Kachuk. Um, I always reference his dad, bro. What a legend, yeah. Hall of Famer. Um, you know, Matthew Kachuk got the puck off a mistake off the Edmonton defender and made him pay, made it, made it, uh, 4 1 or 3 1 at that point. It, it was 3 1, and then they came right back and they scored. right back. And then we came right back and got another goal, which really brought the energy back into the building, right. It was a crazy second period. It really was, dog. But, it, but it made it more doable. Period. You know, going going into that third at the end of the second, like, I was like, all right, if we can score one more goal, because the boys were buzzing at that point, we were mm -hmm. really grooving and playing Panthers hockey again. I really thought if we can take it, you know, down one, then sure enough, you know, we'll, we'll have a, a, you know, we'll be able to tie it up in the fourth and maybe win it or if not take it to OT. We didn't get it. We go into that third period, 4-2. But then we start the third period and we score that goal right away. So that we're Quickly. only down one. So we're talking the, ga about the game was right there. Hell yeah, bro. Because look, you, you said it. We scored very quickly. Fourth minute of the set of the third period, right? After Evan Rodriguez brought us down into two. Um, Oliver Ekman Larson gets the goal right off of the Matthew Kachuk assist. And boom, we're right back in it. 16 minutes left to play in this period. It's like we can definitely find one more goal. And we peppered these guys with shots, man. We ended up out shooting them 37 to like 24 or 26. Um, and, and we won a ton of faceoffs, like 32 to 24, and we won faceoffs 37 to 26. Like we dominated the, the second half of that second period and pretty much the third period. And so we couldn't break the door anymore, right? And then at that point, with three minutes left, Coach Paul Maurice had no choice but to pull Big Bob, right? You have to have that extra attacker on there to try to get that goal back. And we have to point out how hard Matthew Kachuk played that game. Right. He had the goal. He had the assist, set up a bunch of hits, set up, won a bunch of faceoffs, did everything. And then comes out in the last fucking minute of the game, bro. While these guys flip it to an empty net, full swan dive, bro. Stick in hand, completely laid out, knocks the puck away from the goal at the very last second, dog. And what, besides the amazement of that moment, what pissed me off was that he was the only one that got there before another Edmonton player. The next two players that showed up were both wearing right jerseys. After that, three Panthers came back, but too late. That puck was in the back of the net. Game was five to three, and it was over. Yeah, I mean, at that point, I mean that that kind of overlooks the the play, unfortunately, because then you know they yeah. get the empty netter and they they go up two um, on us. But going back to that, what you just said right there about there not being Panthers players where they need to be. I mean, that's, that's what killed us last mm -hmm. game and this game. And in this game, you know, more so that's shorthanded goal. So yeah. that's two, that's back-to-back -back games. They had one in game four and now in game five. And yeah. I don't know how many we've given up. I think we've given up like eight shorthanded is, goals. That was eight right now. Season. Yeah. Like, bro, like, you know, yes, we've gotten away with it because we've been able to play better hockey in advance, but now we're talking we're in the final here. We're one game away from hoisting that trophy. We cannot be giving up shorthanded goals, especially to Connor McDavid and crew, bro. Like, these, nah. that guy that guy is unreal, nah. bro. To see that guy play hockey is unreal. For sure, he's one of those athletes that can play any freaking sport, right? He could have grown up to being a baseball player or could have been a football player. He could have done – he could have been an Olympic swimmer, dog. He, he's just that <laughs> – freakish of an athlete because he moves that quickly and he has those fast twitch muscles and to do it on on skates full speed with a hockey stick in your hand while being hit yeah that's a different animal that we're talking about he, but he's you're turned right up the last two games bro he's he really, really has. turned up and he's uh, he's elevated the whole team's game and and, look, we've seen and for us we've kind of like everybody's kind of like 
you know, gone into hiding. And then, like, Kachuk is like, yo, what the hell? Like, Barkov's like, yo, what's going on? And then they're leaving Big Bob on an island, dog. That's yeah. not Big Bob's fault, all those goals. You can put a couple not. on them, though, but not all of them. No, and, and look, and, and he didn't have the best start to, in game four, right? Obviously, he let a couple of easy ones go by, okay, and that and that has turned into a snowball effect. Okay, cool. But it, 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 I felt like he did the same thing in game two, right, where he kind of, in game five, excuse me, where he's like, man, he let in a whack one. It's like, fuck, now they have the momentum, they have the belief, which is hard for our guys to generate, right, at this moment because they know that Edmondson is very capable of completing a comeback, right? If you leave the door open often enough, these guys will go in there and put up goals and and, and make you pay for your mistakes. The, the, the Panthers can't afford any more mistakes right now, right? They have to clean up the, the penalties that they're giving up because it's been burning them, right? We gave up another penalty, uh, power play goal in that game five. We have to start doing much better on our power plays because we can't put the puck in the net, right? Whenever we do have a man advantage. And we also have to out hustle these guys because the muscle factor is, it's, it's, it's just not, you know, taking really into effect right now. So we have to match their hustle in order to beat these guys, especially if we're going to do it on Friday night on the road. That's going to be a tough task, bro. They got momentum right now. They got momentum. We got to travel 2,500 miles, you know, it's, it, and the thing is, bro, like, in that game five, like we had, man, bro, if we would have been able to tie that shit up, dog, I, if we went to OT, we were going to win it in the first 100%. The first minute of OT. Guaranteed. We've seen it happen time and time again. And it was just, bro, like we had a lot of good shots and they just couldn't land, bro. They just couldn't connect. A couple of miscues, you know, bad decisions from a couple of guys, too. Uh, hesitation. Yeah. I saw a little, that's what I've seen, too, dog. It's kind of guys being a little hesitant. And that's what I liked about right. Chuck in game five was the fact that he was like, yo, I'm not Going doing that it. no more. I'm 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 here. Going for you know it. what I'm saying? I'm gonna do what I gotta do. And he did. So yeah. hopefully, game six, everybody locks it in in Edmonton while we're at BKFC watching some crazy fights. I'm hoping the Panthers are holding it down for us so I can be watching it on my phone simulcast. You know what I'm saying? Like that. That's exactly that's gonna be me. <laughs> that's gonna be that's gonna be all of us. We're all gonna we be. We might have to take a it. monitor out there, dog. Now I'm gonna put that on the list, bro. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it after show something, something, something. Um, yeah, bro, like, I think that you're totally right. And, and, and if we're talking about what, what's the main thing the Panthers got to do to walk away with a win, you got to hustle. This is a closeout game. Nobody's going to lay down. You're in enemy territory. You're going to have to play a fucking perfect game and I'll hustle these dudes. I'm not talking about 60 shots on goal. I'm not talking about shutting these guys out. Nah, man, that's not, not what I mean by perfect game. Perfect in the sense of you're in every space that you can occupy. Everybody sacrifices their body or whatever it is to make a play, right? Everybody steps up to help the other guy on defense. Everybody steps up to go, come back and not commit too much to the offense and not leave the ball. Those are the perfect little things that need to happen in order for the Panthers to go out there and, and close it out, bro, in game six on Friday, man. Uh, I, I believe that they can do it. Go earn it. That's what they yeah, go do. earn it. They got to go earn and, it. This shit ain't game. No, for sure. And, and and truth be told, you got to break Edmonton's spirit right now, right? Because they have the ultimate belief that they can accomplish this comeback, right? All they got to do is win game six and then take it to game seven and anything can happen. That's yeah. definitely what they're thinking in that locker room. Panthers yep. have to go out there and rip their heart out. <sighs> what movie is that? That's like a Kung Fu movie from the 80s. That was the guy punching um, in the chest. <sighs> isn't Some that shit. the blood sport? I think so, bro. Yeah, one of, one of those. It's sport. one of those. Look it up. Yeah, that's one of it. Your heart right here, dog. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's let's go, Panthers. Close that shit out in that's Edmonton good. on Friday night, eight o'clock. You know where to watch it, ABC. And of course, follow your boy on Twitter because I'm gonna be dropping those thoughts. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, go Panthers. Win the cup. Let's go. Stop. It's gonna be around. a busy night for you, brother. Just so you, just so you know, get yourself prepared. Drink a Red Bull hey. or two. Lock in. Lock, lock in. in. You lock it. <laughs> you lock it up. No, you lock it up. Uh, let's let's talk about the U.S. Open, dog, because that shit was probably one of my favorite tournaments of the year because of the ups and downs that it had, especially at the top of the leaderboard, right? Like who was playing well, who was not playing well, <clears throat> Scotty. And then you think about how it finished, right, and how we got there. The finish was even more amazing because it was two top players of the of golf, right, right now. Both of these guys are in the top ten. And a live guy versus a PGA guy with both guys literally playing in front of each other and behind each other. So it was really filled with drama, right? Really filled with good golf, a hard course, and guys having to hit amazing shots to, to earn the win. And that's what Bryson 
DeChambeau did, bro. Shout out to him. Yeah, bro. Shout out to Bryson, bro. He had a phenomenal tournament. I mean, yeah. you had you nailed it, dog. All the storylines on Sunday, you know, uh, they, there was a lot of them going in there. There was a lot of guys that were kind of in the mix, really, that could have came out of the woodwork. And, and if they posted a low score, you know, it could have been their day. Uh, in the end, it really came down to those two guys, you know, Bryson and Rory. Um, mm -hmm. Rory choked it, dog. That's all I got to say about that. Everybody knows that Reggie Miller meme to Spike Lee. That's that's exactly what Rory did, bro. He was sure. I, I don't know what the stat was 496 for 496 inside of three yeah. feet or something like that. And yep. he missed two three footers essentially that would have would have, I believe, secured him the victory. If not 16 he, and 17, right? Uh it was like it was like 14 and 16 or something like that. Something like that. It was in the back nine. It was it was mm -hmm. at the end. And uh <clears throat> it, had he been able to at least make one of those tie it up in regulation. I think Rory would have had a real good shot going into a playoff because of the fact of that course. he was the hotter golfer on Sunday. He of was course. finding fairways. He was finding greens. He was making birdies while Bryson was spraying it off the, the tee, having to like scramble, me. get up and down from everywhere, make crazy putts just to par, you know? So, like, who knows what would have happened there. But in the end, the kid persevered. And he hit some some great golf shots, man. That really like I me. Mean, that one on eighteen for him to win it, bro, out of the bunker, crazy, dog. So crazy, crazy. You, I, people don't like. That's the problem with seeing it on TV. Like you don't Correct. see like how hard that is. They like, don't have don't no see, appreciation like, for it. That's the hardest shot in golf, bro. A 40, 50 yard bunker shot, bro. Like, and he stuck yeah. it to like five, six feet and buried the putt, bro. That's one point four seven. One point four seven percent chance of him landing that down. putt. And getting up and down and landing that ball within three, four feet of the cup. 1.47 chance, dog. That's less than fucking one. <laughs> dog, I mean, you talk, talk about clutch. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, that's that's very clutch. That's that's take, being in the moment and saying, I got this. I've been yeah. here before. I know what it takes. You know, I'm not just going to piss it away. Like, I fought way too hard over four mm -hmm. days. And, dog, that's what he did. Like, and he, it was raw, bro, because, like, you know, Bryce is kind of a dork and he gets a lot of shit. And I'm kind of <laughs> on that teeter totter on the ba the bandwagon, whether I'm like right. hating him or loving him. Right now, I'm on the love side. You know, I think I like what he's doing. I love the fact that he was interacting with the fans, bro. He was yeah. out there pumping people yeah. up, fist pumping, you know what I mean? Like getting the crowd into it and shit. Like, yeah. That's yeah. a man of the people, bro, you know? No, I think that he's shown his maturity, right, in, in how he approaches his approach to golf in within the tournament, right? Because I'm sure that guy is super cool also off the course, right, signing things for fans and talking to people and, because we've seen clips of him Letting doing them it. Touch the trophy. Right, right, that's bro. Cool, you know bro. what I mean? Imagine that's that. cool as hell, man. You're just that chilling there. Oh, Bryson just pulled up, and he's just walking down the crowd of people, and everybody gets a chance to, like, touch that trophy, bro. Like, who does that, bro? Like, what, you know, a sport, like, right. athlete does that. A, a mature athlete, right? A guy who who's aware of what's happening and, and his place in this moment of golf. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people look at him and say, bro, this guy really studies golf. He breaks down the numbers and, and, and they can find things that he does and helps them. Right. We've seen JT even talk about how, how he asked him about how he calculates the putts and, and the distance and how he get, gets that speed. That's stuff that, you know, you may not take into account as a regular golfer. Right. But if you're trying to get an edge, you do it any way possible. And this dude is one guy who doesn't stop looking for edges in the smartest way now, right? And I think that you mentioned something earlier for me that really struck a chord. This dude was spraying it right, left, left, right, all, all over the course out there, bro. And it was not easy. He hit some amazing shots. But he also hit a lot of those shots with confidence because he knew that he had the right club, knew the right distance, can probably do the right read on, on how the ball is going to fly and put it on the green give himself a chance and he did that over and over and over again so i i fully respect how he approached that last that last round and um i was so happy to see him win dog honestly man um he 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 definitely played the best out of everybody i mean hey, obviously he won the tournament but like dog the shit that that kid did consistently over four days bro you got to give him props but i will tell you um you know i know you gave me that little jab earlier about scotty scheffler um, I was very high and confident on Scotty. A lot of people were, and not just me. I mean, he's the number one golfer in the world. True. This, this is the typical, hey, golf is a very humbling sport, you know, because we saw the number one golfer in the world struggle, you know, in this yeah. tournament. Made the cut, barely made the cut, but then continued to struggle all week and never really was able to post a, a, a real decent round. Um, but 
I'll tell you what, dog. At least he made the cut. Unlike five out of your six guys on your fan duel. <laughs> hey, listen, bro. Number one, I'm still, I'm still getting used to this fan duel shit. Uh, as far as <laughs> golfing goes, right? For, for football, when football comes around, we're gonna see, dog. But I appreciate. Right now, you guys- you I appreciate you advantage. jumping in at least, dog. You jumped in, oh, so you guys have an jumped advantage. deep in, and you know, like now you realize how deep it is. So now you got to go back to the drawing board for the next one. The last 100%. one, 100%. My my strategy has changed 100%. And look, you know what? Now to shine some light on a, on some other golfers that balled out there, I skipped on three of the guys that I'm like, bro, these are my guys. I got to pick these guys. Tony Fee now. How many times oh have I talked God, about this bro. guy on the fucking program? You would have been money if you would have taken <laughs> Even look, even Alberg, we we've talked about Oberg. him, Alberg, so much here, and again, he went out there and had a freaking weekend as well. It was in the running, second, first place, and then boom, he you know, fell of, off a little fell bit. Apart on Sunday, but he was still balling. We yeah, talked about Xander. Round. We talked about Xander, right? And we were like, oh, yo, know, maybe he keeps it rolling. Top Why ten you not finish. taking Xander, dog. Dog, my boy Patrick Cantley. Oh, I hate that guy. I know That's you do, but boy. I love that guy, and I didn't pick him on my family. Yeah, like. yeah, so now I'm, I'm, other guys. I'm learning, right? I'm, I'm learning, and I'm going to figure that shit out. But, yeah, dog, that, that fan thing was cool, man. Shout out it's to hard, man. It's hard, man. It's hard. I've literally, hard. all three of them this year, I've come in second place every time. Yep. Um, the first time was to Jason for the Masters, and then now for the PGA and for the U.S. Open. Freaking right. Mike from Orlando. Took it down. So shout out to Mike, man. Um, the Fanduel the King. Recipe. Yeah, bro. He's he's got the right <laughs> right idea. But uh, yo, know, last thing about the US Open before we we go to uh, BKFC. Did did you see the article that that Nomad shared with us on uh, uh, right, Luke Titan? Super no, dope, I dog. I mean, that story was amazing. Such a great you story. Know, they had a few amateurs that made the weekend uh, at the US Open, and one of them was uh, Hialeah's own Luke Clanton, who uh, yeah, I, I I knew about already, but I didn't even know where he was from the kid grew up right here in country club like right a few steps away like that's where he right. learned how to golf and like the article like quotes him saying like you know that doesn't need to be the best place in the world as long as you have a drive and a desire to be good you know so yes, sir. just wanted to yes, shout sir. that kid out that's a hell of a story for sure for sure and hopefully that guy's a future uh correspondent on miami golf bros right going out there and give you a kick ass a uh, quick ass whooping on on his own uh, his home course right yeah <laughs> Yeah, he'll do that quickly, bro. And then Brian, he's like young. He's like 19 or something. He's a young yeah, kid. And he, made, he made the cut and he played phenomenal. He was in the running to the very last hole yeah. for the low yeah. amateur against Neil yep. Shipley. And uh, unfortunately, he three putted from like six feet. And Happens to the best of us, bro. Yeah, he really wanted the birdie to 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 tie the low amateur, and then he got overly aggressive and then didn't make the comebacker. It was tough. He hit a crazy shot to get there. But right, uh, right, yeah, because right, he was he was inside the top what fifty for a long while. All amateurs at one point were inside the top fifty on Sunday, which is crazy to me because like they're amateurs, but we got guys like Scotty, you know, and other people, a bunch of dudes like plus eight, plus ten, you know, and it's like damn, these amateurs are out here shooting really good scores for such a hard ass course, right? But they're probably playing with no pressure also, right? Like nobody's really watching those guys or like really putting the pressure on them. So they, they can probably go out there and enjoy themselves more. Still, Even still though it's a tough golf course. Still yeah, a tough 100%. golf course, man. Tough field too. The best field in golf. All right, talk to me. What's the next major on deck? Uh we got the open or as people call it the British Open. Uh mm-hmm. that's happening in, in uh in July. So we got about a month <clears throat> left before that. That'll be your last chance for FanDuel in uh in golf this year. Um and I don't know, I don't even know what to expect, bro. That the open, you know, you always get crazy wild cards. I think Brian Harmon, no, I can't remember who won it last year. Uh Shane Lowry a couple years ago. I mean, you mm-hmm. know, Camp Smith, you know, uh, you just always have somebody different. I, I like a Euro, you know, hopefully like a Tommy Fleetwood does really well. I'll tell you that right would now. Be cool. I'll give you some insight. That's gonna be probably on my fan duel, Tommy Fleetwood, because <laughs> he's going back to England. So I know those yeah. guys know the links golf and they know how to play those courses. So and they know that the weather be, out there, they know the weather out there more football. importantly. Yep. Yeah, it should be fun, man. It should be fun. Uh, let's wrap up the show with BKFC, man. We we kind of started the show talking about it, right? Let's we might as well finish the show talking about it as well, man. BKFC 62 going down this Friday at the Hollywood Hard Rock and Casino. If you haven't bought your tickets yet, get ready to pay a premium. But guess what? It's worth it, dog, because this card is stacked, bro. And if we're talking about a stacked card, you're talking about a card that has three championship fights in one night. Like, that's are there why. still tickets available? Some at the very, very, very top of that stadium. Yeah, I was the, gonna say, bro, arena, 
I heard people you know, have been going through tickets, selling mad mm -hmm. tickets for this event, and we've seen it, bro. Wow. Every single event we've gone to have just gotten exponentially bigger. Every time, bro. And and every time that, that BKFC, I feel like they put an event down here at the Hard Rock, it becomes a better event and a better event and a better event and a better event. Because, so, like, now this this BKFC 62 card, bro, you got a guy, right, Brian, a guy, Duran versus Kai, King Kai, uh, Hefty Bag, Stewart for the for the uh, featherweight championship and that's a fight that's full of energy that people would pay whatever to go see that fight and they are and it's because both of these guys are amazing at what they do right kai has earned his belt uh by going five and oh uh beat louis beat the champ to get his belt this is his third time defending the belt and he's doing it in enemy turf right because this is guyo's backyard um he we've seen him perform here so many times for bkfc bro and every time he does it he's packing the house he's putting on a show he's going to war uh most recently against louis lopez right where he cemented himself as the number one contender for the featherweight belt dog today at the press conference was a lot of fireworks bro and and i feel like both of these guys are really coming to take each other's heads off and uh we're the lucky ones who get to watch it from <laughs> from a distance you know what i'm saying from a safe distance and, and still talk to those guys afterwards um there's gonna be brawls dog there's this one i mean based off what you told me already today from the presser I yeah. know there's going to be brawls in the crowd, especially like people, you know, if so, if one guy oh, yeah. even shows any kind of like, hey, I'll go, let's go, Kai. All of Gallo's fans are going to go crazy and, and, and get after him, I bet, you know. Oh, 100%. Um, I hope it doesn't get to that. I hope it doesn't get ugly. I hope everybody has a good time and is there for what we're there for. Um, right. I'm, you know, I'm expecting fireworks, though, bro. Like these two guys are promising it, you know, and, and I know you yeah. spoke to Kai. Uh, he seems well prepared. He seems like he's not, you know, afraid or shying of the, you know, of the moment. Um, right. He knows exactly what he's, you know, <laughs> what he's stepping into. And uh, he seems like you know, he's confident. So that's exactly what you need to take on a guy like Gaio in his home soil. Like, like right now. Absolutely. You know? absolutely and and look both of those guys are are real real badasses in that featherweight division bro so like you said man that's going to be pure fireworks uh great main event that bkfc is putting on together here uh for bkfc 62 in the co-main event we have another championship fight keith uh the rockstar richardson versus alberto indio blas um bro blas has an interesting story right cuban immigrant coming into america being a, a jiu-jitsu artist uh being an mma guy keith richardson having a great background in mma serving our country as as a marine and, and like you know uh just being a part of that and having that turn into combat sports and turning that passion these guys are gonna go to war dog because at the way in there was like a little bit of like a disconnect um as far as languages right the language barrier and uh it got heated real quick bro and i feel like both of these guys are are feel like they have that pressure to put on an even better show because not only are they going to be following a championship fight but they're also going to be right before another championship fight for the main event so this card this card is stacked and this fight is going to be amazing dog uh how many fights are there in total for this one we got nine like fights in the main oh, yeah, card and then crazy. another three in the in the prelims man any 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 women fighting in this card yes bro the you know what? I'm glad you mentioned that, dog. Thanks for bringing that up. Christy Vesens, man. Um, she, we saw her last time at BKFC. She, didn't she get was to getting fight ready the last to fight, time. and she didn't get to fight. Dog. Her opponent pulled out at the last minute. Literal um, last second. Like, she was so like wide. walking to the squared circle and like, no, yeah. I'm not fighting. It's so heartbreaking, dog, to see that, right? Especially for somebody, again, you and I personally know what these guys go through to train for this, right? And to see that hard work just kind of like not go to waste but just not get the opportunity to to see what what would have been uh sucks big time man and we saw her after the, the the news came out she was devastated but she also had a good spirit bro she's such a a good person positive person and uh, she brings a lot of good attention to the women's division bro and uh, and she's her opponent man yeah she really is a beast bro and her opponent melanie shot she's game dude she's coming off a loss but she was 2-0 and before um she lost and and that was her fighting for the bell against Brittany hart who's the champion so this fight is is very promising because if christy wins this fight that puts her right in line for that championship bout bro and imagine you know either going on the road or getting to to fight for the bell in your hometown as a woman and and being one of the people who can carry the the banner for the women right in that in this company would be huge bro um we what also got a if, sorry to cut Go you ahead. off but what would happen if if her opponent decides to back out of this one you know like oh, what does man. that do for her championship you, hopes 
You, you know what? You if I'm gonna give her a chance, like make her the number one contender, if people are just backing out of fights. I'm sure. I'm sure BKFC has a way to figure that out, right on the back end. But I, I, I really do think that Melanie is game, dog. Like this is not a lady that that shies away from violence, shies away from fighting, um, and shies away from her opponent, bro. She's one of the few female fighters that consistently comes forward, plays with her jab, um, and really tries to damage her opponent and finish him. So Melanie's coming in to beat Christy up. No doubt. And Christy is coming out there to beat up Melanie and show everybody what she's been working on and why she deserves a title shot, right? Uh, it's going to be a great fight. Right right after that one, we got the third championship fight between Yomi Escoboza, Kung Fu, my dog, the Power Ranger, and Jared um, Deadpool Warren. They're going to be fighting for the vacant light heavyweight title. And, that, and, and if you watch the interview I did with Yomi, dog, and, and that we did with Yomi here, um... That late heavyweight division is stacked, and now it's wide open because there's a belt on the line, and as soon as somebody wins that belt, you're going to have to defend in the next two, three months because there are guys lining up to fight the champion and be the new champion of uh, BKFC in the light heavyweight division. Yeah, and then the, there's there's a lot of potential in this card to see who the next star of BKFC is going to be. Because yes, sir. I don't know if you saw the news, but their current star right now, they're kind of you know their their landmark guy, Platinum Mike Perry. He just got yep. announced to fight Jake Paul as the the substitute for Mike Tyson. Yep. And I mean, I, I don't know how much more that guy's going to endure in BKFC if he gets a fat check there, or maybe you know a deal to do another fight or something like that. So there's yeah. going to be an opening for somebody to step up. This card could provide that star. Well, you know, what's funny. They mentioned that to David today in the press conference. And what he talked about as far as, you know, Mike's fight is the the fact that they had an agreement, right, where he's like, bro, if you go out there and fight somewhere else, you're still representing BKFC. Your home is BKFC. And Mike's always said it. You know what I mean? So he knows that he can dominate in this sport. Probably not won't be able to dominate in boxing at this stage. But in this arena, which is kind of like, completely built and tailored made to him uh he knows that this is his career bro and and him and david have a good relationship where where they both feel comfortable with exploring whatever's best for the brand right and uh him getting that shot on uh with jake paul is just gonna blow up bkfc even more man so uh i think they're both happy with that situation um and they also have connor backing them up right so the the spotlight is definitely on bkfc and you're right bro this is a chance to really make yourself known because this is probably going to be bigger than knucklemania that happened out there in los los angeles as far as best cards that bkc puts together and if you can make an impression here catch the eye of certain of a certain conor mcgregor and have that guy post you to his social media or invite you to come train or you know pick you as the next guy that that's heading towards the top of bkfc who knows what that could do for their career, right? Like we saw him shut out um, Justin Iberola, our homeboy, uh, on his Insta, Insta, Instagram. We also know that um, there's plenty of people here that are on this card that have had exciting knockouts, exciting finishes. We're talking about G. Cutman Perez. Um, we know that uh, P Pazola, the other guy, excuse me, um, he's he's also a badass at edgar excuse me he knocked out his last opponent the last time we were in bkfc completely destroyed him in two rounds um christy we know she can finish an opponent at any time um we've seen gallo finish people we've seen kai finish people we've seen keith finish people like blast finish people like everybody here on this card has given a big moment big excitement to a pay-per-view event now they're all on this stacked pay-per-view event <sighs> It's gonna be crazy. You're gonna to have to outshine the outshiner of the outshine. My biggest, my biggest, my biggest complaint. That level. My biggest complaint of the BKFC. You know, and this might be something I've never shared on wax before. But my biggest complaint before has always been, you know, some of those fights that they put that it's like, all right, bro, this guy had no business being in the ring. Like, yeah, yeah he got a right. raw knockout, but like his opponent was not on his level. You know, like that was an easy fight for them or whatever, like a tune-up mm -hmm, fighter mm -hmm. or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't sure. sound like that's going to be the case this Friday. It sounds like everybody on the card has advanced beyond those those fights and are now primed to go to war. So I'm excited. I'm looking forward Me to too, this. Me too, bro. Me too, bro. We're going to have so much fun out there. It's going to be a great event, a great night. And uh, hopefully we get the homies out there to come chill and vibe and watch some amazing fights, bro, at the Hard Rock, bro. Maybe take some of the winnings that we make from the BKFs, from the Hard Rock app, right? Make some money, pull we'll it out, we'll put it on know. the table. I don't know if they have it on there. I remember last time they didn't have them they do. on there. They do now. They do. I was looking at it today, dog. Oh, I was right. looking at it today. So I'm going to get on that right now. You know what I mean? You Start know what I mean? Holler at us. 
holla at us hard rock app you know what i mean we're looking for sponsors right now yeah yeah um, yeah we well, can put the logo anywhere anywhere super it, it right over right our here. faces yep put it right there put it right there uh but yeah man go make sure to get, check them out if you if you can't make it check it on on the bkfc app it's like six bucks a month five bucks a month it's totally worth it you get all the fights um and you can watch them on your tv and all that stuff so it's definitely worth it man bkfc is on the rise bro 100 percent Oh yeah, hundred percent. We're we're a part of it, baby. So I can't wait to to yes, spit sir. out some fire content this weekend. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But you know where we're gonna put that content? That's right here on Sports with Soso's YouTube channel. So guess what? That means you gotta tell a friend. To tell a friend. To tell another friend. To tell everybody they know. To tell their mama about this show because we're gonna be putting on amazing, amazing interviews here. We're gonna be putting on amazing programming for you guys here. Trust me, the show is uh let's say evolving, right? And we're gonna be doing some great things on here, and you guys have to be on the train with us for that ride, man. Until next time, peace. peace.